آل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين وحبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الله على أعدائهم عداء الله من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم في البر والبهر ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على كثير ممن خلقنا تفضيلا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات سلام عليك السلام عليك رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا حبيب الله أحسن الله لك العزاء في مصاب ولدك الحسين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين يا ولي الله أحسن الله لك العزاء في مصاب ولدك الحسين صلى الله عليك يا مولاتي وسيد الدين فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين 
أحسن الله لك العزاء في مصاب ولدك الحسين صلى الله عليك يا أبا محمد يا سن المجتبى أحسن الله لك العزاء في مصاب أخيك الحسين وصلى الله عليك يا مولاي وسيدي وإمامي وصاحب أسرنا وناموس دهرنا حجة ابن الحسن بقية الله الأعظم يا صاحب الزمان يا شريك القرآن أحسن الله لك العزاء في مصاب جدك الحسين يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الزهراء يا ابن الحسن أحسن الله لك الحزار صلى الله عليك يا أيها الإمام المزلوم الغريب البدن السليم والخد التريم والشيب الخزي والرأس المرفوع المرمل بالدماء متقطع الأعضاء مسلوب العمامة والرضاء من دون كفن وغسل على أرض كربلاء يا غريب نينبا صلى الله عليه يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفناء عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأهد منا لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين أولاد الحسين وعلى all together شام غريبة السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين and let me add here وعلى أختك زينب الكبرى 
ام المصائب او اكبر صلى الله عليك يا ايتها الصابرا يا ايتها الطاهرا يا ايتها الرازيه المرضيه يا زينب الكبرى صلى الله عليه يا مولاتي وعلى جميع اهل بيت الحسين المظلومين صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد respected brothers and sisters azza allah wujurana wa ujurakum may almighty increase your reward in this aza morning shedding tears and grief of ahlul bayt alayhi assalam I have said it over and over but let me repeat it because shaitan comes in the mind influences creates doubts you know i so much to cry why so much to wail why so much to weep why so much to shout ya husain never doubt that even brothers and sisters hmm. our beloved imam imam khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi he himself mujahid he himself reviver revolutionary he himself liberator founder of the greatest revolution of our times but what he says about this aza afzal qurabat afzal qurabat means the best way to get close to allah is zikr husain is remembrance of husain these tears you know they are very valuable don't think what people say what people talk these tears are valuable allahu akbar when nothing will help us all these philosophies and lot of things which we talk and speak will be left behind these tears you shed for aba abdullah will come to rescue you in that deep night and dark night of your grave first night brothers and sisters you can demand their i cried for your husain allah then hadith says from imam sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam كل عين باكيا every eye you will be crying on the day of qiyamah every eye no exception except two eyes an eye which cried in fear of allah an eye which cried on tragedy of karbala i which shed tears for hussein will not cry on the day of qiyamah brothers and sisters therefore value of this aza is great great you know we we explain to you philosophy this that reasoning give you speeches i myself and everybody 
But honestly, tonight, let me say to you, what we understand, we understand according to our size. Huh? Our size. What is hidden behind remembrance of Hussain, only Allah knows. We must just surrender. What is really behind under this gum and sorrow of Abba Abdullah? How? Anyway, brothers and sisters, with the barakat of Imam Hussain, alayhi salatu wassalam, this year, we spoke different Quranic principles, concepts, values, core one, major one, which flourished in Karbala. Now, if you remember, one of the nights we spoke about that Quran believes in essential honor and dignity of human being. Can you remember that very interesting discussion? Under the ayah number 70 of Surah Mubarak Isra. Laqad karramna bani Adam. And we honored children of Adam. Honor, dignity. And we saw in practical life of our Nabi, Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, how he showed respect to human being. Does not matter. Who is this person? Men, women, black, white, colored, Indian, I don't know, all these terminologies of South Africa. Rich, poor, whoever. Muslim, non-Muslim, kafir, believer, non-believer. Insan. Lakat karramna bani Adam. Tonight, I would like to continue this discussion by saying that one of the consequences or, or compulsory results of this approach that insan is respectful, respected. We are supposed to pay utmost respect to insan by itself. We never must insult insan. We never must humiliate insan. We never must do anything to bring somebody down. No. That's against Quran. Imam Hussain showed this in most beautiful manner in Karbala. Even to enemies. Allahu Akbar. How he showed that courtesy. That dignity of insan. How he protected did not allow anybody to assault on dignity and respect of anyone, any insan. And this dignity of insan, brothers and sisters, goes even beyond life. In other words, of course, alive insan is muhtaram, is respected, has dignity. But dignity of insan in Quran and Islamic culture goes further that if even insan dies, his body is also respected. His body also got respected as body of insan. Therefore, brothers and sisters, Islam established what we call it akhlaq of jihad. When you go to war, 
when you fight with your enemy, yes, sometimes, there is no option but to go to war. Physical clash and conflict happens. Blood sheds, no doubt about it. Happens and happen in the history. But even when you are fighting with your enemy, and of course, you are intending to kill him, but again, you're not allowed to lose that essential, basic, primary dignity of that insan. Hmm. And therefore, Quran, Islam says very clearly, now if you killed someone in war, in battle, in jihad, end of the story. How? Body must be left. You don't show your hatred toward body. Because that was culture of Jahiliya. Culture of Islam was no, 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 no. You were with war with him. War took place. You killed him. He died. Finish. That's it. And pull back. Retreat. You have no right now to touch the body. This is jihad. This is akhlaq of jihad. This is fiqh of jihad. Prejudice. Uh, jurisprudence of jihad. No, you're not allowed to touch. Similarly, you are fighting with men or whoever is in front of you. You have no right to now fight and abuse and attack family, children, women of the enemy. No. What is their crime? You fighting with the people, you fight. Families, women, children, no, no. Islam does not allow. That is karamat insaniya. Not allowed. Brothers and sisters, not only, let me tell you, not only you are not allowed to disrespect body of a human being. But amazing is this Islamic rule that you are not allowed to disrespect even dead body of animals. Ya Allah. Not allowed. No? Normally when we talk about animals and our mind comes the you know, dog, which we don't take. Serious talk. In fiqh, there is a masala which says that you are what's called musla, tamfil, you know, to crush the body. If a dog dies, you're not supposed to crush the body. Allahu Akbar. No, you are not. Leave the dogs and animals. Fiqh of jihad, jurisprudence of jihad says that if you captured a city, you're not allowed to cut the trees. You're not allowed to burn down farms. You are not allowed to kill animals. You are not allowed to poison, for example, sources of Life like water, not allowed to poison it. Haram. Yes, it's enemy, it's enemy city, you occupied it, you took it over, but you're not allowed. You're not allowed. Those who became prisoners, you are supposed to treat them with the best of treatment. Allahu Akbar. This is human dignity in Islam, brothers and sisters. Allahu Akbar. That I or we are all a stack really, a stack in understanding enemies of Ahlul Bayt and their animosity toward Ahlul Bayt. Ya Allah. That they crossed all the limits. 
they crossed all the limits allahu akbar and they committed crimes and heinous acts which person if things feel ashamed how that is possible allahu akbar brothers and sisters as i narrated for you this morning that this afternoon late afternoon after asr sayyid shuhada aba abdullah al husain was martyred ya aba abdullah and what they did after that tell me in which culture this is you know accepted you know what they did allah they separated heads of all shuhada allah akbar according to some writers of history 72 according to some writers 83 somewhere there that was the number of heads they they separated and counted look at that and then what they did that's all no 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 this afternoon ibn saad decided to stay and not to go to kufa in the evening or late evening not very far of course can go but he decided to stay but urgently he sent all the heads of shuhada to kufa and you know how he sent he divided the heads between different tribes allah akbar you take 20 allah akbar you take 30 you take 15 you take 12 you take hawazin muzhaj bani asad this that allah akbar look you know why because tomorrow you should be proud that i brought 20 heads i brought 15 heads i brought so allah akbar look at that and what about head of imam hussein allah akbar what about head of sayyid al shuhada abu abdullah al husain sanan ibn ans the killer of imam hussein allah akbar was going crazy this afternoon he was mad he was saying that i have killed the best person on the earth i should get gold and silver they must fill my bags with gold and silver i killed the worst enemy of bani umayya i did that i did that allah ibn saad rejected him said you are mad you are crazy and then he gave head of imam husain ali salam to a person called khuli allahu akbar and he brought he ran with head of imam husain to kufa with his horse when he reached kufa it was too late he went directly to the governor's house doors were closed people were sleeping he came back to his house his wife asked this question from where you are coming and what you brought in this bag allah akbar you know what he said i brought something which will fill our whole house with gold and silver and coins she asked what he said i brought head of husain son of the daughter of rasulullah she said curse on you curse of allah on you 
she was a mu'mina, this lady. And this is historical record I am telling you, brothers and sisters, in the night like that. Oh. He tried to hide this head somewhere. So he placed that head and went to sleep. And this woman says that in the middle of night, I could not in fact sleep, she says, I could not sleep. With this sense that in my house, head of Hussain ibn Ali is being kept. In the middle of night, he woke, she woke up and what she saw, that a noor pillar of light from heavens coming down to her house. <laughs> and white birds are flying around. <laughs> An amazing noor is coming out of this bag. <laughs> How blind they were. How blind they were. Ya Abu Abdullah sallallahu alayk. So head were sent to Kufa. Heads of every shaheed were sent to Kufa. And then history says something which was very difficult to explain. The wording is فَبَدَعُوا بَنَحَبِ آلِ رَسُولُ Then Ibn Sa'ad ordered Allahu Akbar to start looting family of Rasulullah. <laughs> family of Rasulullah. A letter arrived from Kufa. Ibn Saad, I want you. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> to trample the bodies of shuhada under the horses. This is character of Bani Umayya. This is nature of this Shajra Khamisa. Allahu Akbar. Ibn Saad wrote, read this letter in front of his army and asked them to do that. All the bodies are there must be pulled out of the camp of Imam Hussain, must be placed there on the sand of Karbala, and horses must run over it. At that point, some tribal sensitivity came up, and people of Bani Asad said, Habib ibn Muzahir belongs to us. You said we kill him, we killed him, but this is insult, this is not possible. No, we will not allow. Brothers and sisters, every shaheed has some connection that side through tribal, from mother's side, from father's side, somewhere, somehow. And therefore, every tribe said, no, we will not allow any body which somehow is related to us to be trampled under the horses. Brothers and sisters, do you know all the bodies were taken. Only one body was left. <laughs> Who has no one from mother or father or any side in that side of the camp? Allahu Akbar. And that was body of no one but Hussain ibn Ali Abu Abdullah. Ibn Saad shouted, who? Who wants to trample? Who wants to volunteer? Ten people volunteered. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And those ten people cursed one. They came forward with their horses. Body of Hussain. Allahu Akbar. On the sands of Karbala. And horses started to run and trample the body from south to north and north to south. <laughs> and they were saying, Lakad 
Razazna sadra min ba'd zuhri Allah, they used to proudly say this poetry that we trampled on the body of Hussain and we crushed Allah. Razazna sadra. We crushed Allah. <laughs> this chest, this bones of the chest. We could hear how these bones of the chest of Hussain were cracking. Allahu Akbar. And then what they did? Allahu Akbar. And then they attacked Allahu Akbar on the camps, robbing them and looting them and throwing fire on them, burning down the camps. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Humaydiya Hamid ibn Muslim says <laughs> that I was running in between the camps. I can never forget Zainab Kubra <laughs> pulling Imam Zainul Abideen and other children and women from one tent to another tent <laughs> to protect them from the burning tents. <laughs> Until all the tents were burned down. Allahu Akbar. And someone tried to attack. Ali ibn al Hussein, and he says, I was the one who said, You have killed already all the men. Now, what is the benefit of killing this young boy? And he is sick. The sickness itself will kill him. Leave him. Allahu Akbar. And somehow they left Ali ibn al Hussein. Allahu Akbar. But in this chaos, in this robbing and looting, what happened? Allah knows better. <laughs> These are women of the house of Rasulullah. These are dignity of the house of Rasulullah. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters? Allah Akbar. That young, that young girl, Allah Akbar, of Hussein ibn Ali, Sakina was running up and down because her own clothes caught fire Allah Akbar and there were small earrings in her ears they did not take her out those earrings they just snatched those earrings from the ears of Sakina and Sakina's ears were bleeding Allah Akbar <laughs> oh family of Hussain Rasulullah's woman in the darkness, in the darkness, Allahu Akbar, in the darkness of Karbala, now sitting on the sands of Karbala, Allahu Akbar, there is nothing to cover under the sky, Allahu Akbar, brothers and sisters, let me just Say a few words and conclude. Ajrukum Allah, Azam Allah, Jubrakum. Zainab is gathering everybody, trying to console widows of Karbala. <laughs> there are women in Karbala who lost their son, who lost their sons who lost their husband, who lost their brother, who lost their nephews, who lost their cousins, Allahu Akbar. How Zainab all alone must support these women. 
Now you know why we call this night Shame Gariba or evening of unfortunate ones, evening of strangers, evening of oppressed Allah Akbar. How Zainab was managing and taking care of whole this caravan Allah Akbar. In this caravan of widows and orphans, in this caravan of children and Allah Akbar lady. It is in between, I think a little bit later in the night, Zainab, Allahu Akbar, can I say to you before I go further, something amazing about Sayyada Zainab, Imam Zainul Abidin says, I was in high fever, I was burning with the fever that day. But I can't forget that evening and night. My Amma, my Aunt Zainab, Allahu Akbar, taking care of me, nursing me, taking care of widows, taking care of orphans, taking care of children, taking care of some who were wounded, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But I can never forget Imam Zainul Abideen is saying that my Aunt Zainab, even in that night, did not forget her tahajjud, Allahu Akbar. Did not miss her tahajjud. In the middle of night, Zainab realized Sakina is missing, Allahu Akbar. Sakina is missing. It started to look around. Sakina is not there. Where is my Sakina? Where is Hussein's Amana? Might I'm gonna say to Hussein, now in the desert, in that plains of Karbala, in that open field, Zainab is looking, saying, where are you, Sakina? Where are you, my love, my darling daughter? I can't show you, Sakina. Allahu Akbar. While Zainab was walking and looking for Sakina, all of a sudden, sudden, Zainab ended up in a ditch. And then what she saw, she could not believe. Sakina is sleeping on a body without head. Allahu Akbar. Zainab came. Zainab came. Separated Zakina from the body. Zakina, why you are here? Zakina, why you are sleeping here? Sakina says, Amma Zainab, Aunt Zainab, don't you know? I always used to sleep on the chest of my father. I came to sleep on the chest of my dad. Sakina, but how you know that this body belongs to your dad? To recognize a body, either you must recognize by head or you must recognize by clothes. There was no head. There were no clothes. Allah Akbar. Oh, then full of spears and wounds. Zukaina, how you recognize? Zukaina says, Amma Zainab, Aunt Zainab, I was looking, looking around in the maktal, calling for my father. Where are you, my dad? All of a sudden, I heard a voice coming, a voice coming out of this body, saying, Elaya, Elaya, Ya Sukaina, come to me, come to me, O Sakina. And when I went close, Allah Akbar, I heard, I heard this poetry coming from the throat of Imam. Oh, Sakina, when you go back, Iqra minna salam, give Shias my salam, and tell them, Mahma sharab tumma asbin, Shiati, 
مهما شربتم ما اسبن فاشكروني او ماي شيا وين ايفر يو درينك كولد واتر ريمبر مي او سمعتم بغريب او شهيد فندبوني او ماي شيا when you hear about a passenger a traveler got lost when you hear about somebody being killed oh my shia you must cry for me let the shia you ma ashura oh my shia i wish you were with me on the plains of garbala kayfa astasqil tifle ha I ask for a drop of water for my baby Ali Asghar Matameusan Ya Hussein